We'll see. Uh -huh. All right. I'm going to look yeah. if we are live. Live. Hello. We should be on dog training uh, and behavior community. I'm not seeing us up here yet. Uh, do -do -do -do. Do -do. I don't even know how to. Oh, there yes, we are. We are on. Are we? Yep. Okay. Hey, yeah. everybody. Sorry <laughs> about the technical glitch, but things change. Haven't been live in a while. Uh, single live is great. <laughs> Anita and I wanted to do this together, and somehow some functions on Zoom have changed. Anyways, we figured it out. So this is a stream yard. Um, I think there's an invitation on the live so that we can see your name because otherwise I'm going to see your comments if you post on face group. So please do and um, let me know who you are. And we were going to do, um, I guess, Q&A. This was Anita's idea. <laughs> um, there is a really good question um, today about resource guarding. So I'm going to let Anita speak about this. So you say we are live, right? Because I yes, can't, we are. I can't really tell. But if you can, that's good. Yeah, I can. I can see it on my phone. Okay. And, uh, the subtitles are up and everything. Okay. Oh, yep. There we are. Okay. So yeah. Um, do you want to? I'll read the question. Okay. So how do we deter the new toy guarding behavior, question mark? Every time a new toy is introduced, our rescue foster dog becomes possessive and aggressive with the humans. She is the only pet in the environment. If toy goes away for a while because company is coming, she is obsessed and will sit by the closet and just stare and whine intermittently. We don't withhold it except for then and try to promote positive playtime with it, but it happens every time. She loves toys and play, but the aggressive guarding is a behavior we'd like to extinguish. extinguish. Eventually, with regular exposure, the new toy loses its fascination, but for a few weeks, she knows exactly where it is, and it's the first thing she grabs in the morning. She growls and is snarly if certain humans approach her when the toy is close by. Thank you for feedback. This is a very big question. Yeah, there is a lot to unpack. And then uh, if you scroll down in the comments, because I asked some questions about the situation and this dog part in particular, uh, and there is a lot more, there is a bit more information and a bit more detail about this dog. Right. So Boston Terrier and Frenchie. Toys available to her in a basket. She often rifles through for her favorites to play with us. Knows their names. Squeaker, monkey, monster, hot dog. will chew and try to tear off little ears or legs. But we usually cut those parts off initially if we see her ruining a toy. We have learned to buy durable. She likes her snuffle ball, treats and cabbage layers, puzzle toys. She is a good little walker but reactive to other dogs. Vigilant for squirrels in our path, some noise sensitivity around the home, doorbell knocking, dogs on TV, try to join the live chat, but it wasn't working. Is there a recorded video? Yeah, so yeah. we're back. Thank you. Um, just for some, um, yeah, again, loaded comment. Um, lots going on. And I'm going to let you answer this. So... Hey everybody, Sylvie here. If you haven't been on for a while and my very good dog training friend, Anita over in England. And uh, you may have seen her in some of our lives. A lot of times we will collaborate. We haven't done lives in a really long time. Life gets in the way, but um, I love having Anita on because she is a awesome dog trainer and behavior consultant. And we have uh, a lot of similarities in how we work with um, our clients. And we just, uh, we kind of mesh with that. So I'm going to let Anita answer um, 
because I'm pretty much going to trust what she says. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, I was and smiling. And you're hearing this from a dog trainer, right? So any dog trainers in the group know how much control we like to have over um, what we're teaching. But anyways, so what yeah. suggestions do you have? Yeah, exactly. That is that is absolute trust. And I do exactly the same thing when Sylvia comes into into my group that we just, yeah, just carry on. I know that is absolutely 100 percent. I can trust whatever Sylvia is saying. But you guys know Sylvia. She, she's amazing. So this is a loaded question and uh, and there is a lot to unpack. And uh, my question to this lady was that uh, exactly what breed it is, because my guess was that's that we are we are talking about a mouthy uh, type of dog. So so I was thinking of either a bully breed or because I'm I'm having bully breeds. I've got Staffy, I've got an extra bully and or or a gun dog. And I have got a toy poodle as well. So I've got both ends uh, that and these are the dogs, visuals, Labradors, uh, bullies that love to grab things with their mouth and, and they just, just want to keep it and want to possess it. And, uh, and so many times when they are little, it does happen. I'm, I know that we are talking about the positive dog right here, but let me just go back a little bit. Uh, that so many times it happens when they are tiny and little, well, my ex bully he's not that tiny and little, but it just happens so many times. I'm still in that situation with him. He's one year old right now, adolescent. And he grabs something, and if it is really, really important, then they won't, won't want it let go. And, and that's when the power thing can happen, uh, when, when we want to take it away. Sometimes we just think that it's important to get it back. Sometimes it is just dangerous for them to to have the thing, and we just get to have it back from them. And that's when they learn that actually it is not safe when a human is approaching to me, when a human is uh, reaching out with their hands, uh, because because they just want to take it away. So the possession, the, the value is already upgraded for that object uh, a million times. And uh, and the dog starts to communicate. They are turning their head away. They are trying to move away, and and uh, and they can't. And that's when they start speaking louder and louder, uh, with growling. They put their put their head low. Put put their paws on the stuff uh, they are holding, and and it can become a very dangerous situation. So uh, obviously we are dealing here with the foster dog, so we don't know the history of this dog. Uh, but there is a learning history for this dog that, that has happened, that something is important, something is valuable. I don't want to give it up. Um, and, uh, and, and that's why my questions were that are the toys freely available for this dog? Because uh, with the toys, we have got different types of toys we are using in our dog's life, especially now Christmas, and I'm sure that all the dogs are loaded with all sorts of stuff. Uh, we have got the soft toys that they, uh, that they, some dogs just love to, to chew it, just to nibble on it, uh, because it's just soothing, it, they, they use it for sleeping. Um, my dogs will just simply tear it up and, and um, just if actually just today earlier I showed Sylvia the the videos <laughs> how the house looked like it was all like snowball everywhere so the the tiny toy was just completely shredded and the whole living room was covered in white filling so uh so so the soft toys can be for shredding then there are uh different toys like balls and tuck toys and ropes um that that are i call interactive toys and uh and then there are chew toys which can be different material obviously the best if it's uh um all natural um and oh yes and and then the the 
enrichment type of toys like the snuffle uh snuffle boys just like the the original poster is uh sorry i my phone switched off and i can't see the name uh jay carey um asked about um so so when my dogs are not actively playing with me when they are just hanging around in the living room uh they have got freely available uh toys they can chew and that that they are safe to chew if there are things that i'm adding like um like uh, uh the coffee root um type of chews or or even even the the cow hides and uh and the different skins because my dogs are very powerful chewers i have them supervised so i'm hanging around because uh because they they can chew b bigger pieces of it they want to swallow it they can choke on it uh i have to take it away when it become, becomes too small um and and it's not an issue with my dogs because that's that's how we have been training them the way i'm taking it away from them i'm offering something else that they can eat quickly they can finish straight away that is uh that is safe for them and then i can uh, actually now even just with simple scatter feeding so they exactly know the routine scatter feeding and they just go for the kibble so so eventually it will they will learn that that uh that it doesn't even have to be a high value because the value it's it's just an it could be actually a different life that how the value transfers from the toy from the chew from anything onto the human and that's what we where what we want to achieve and and when the toy dog is possessive over a toy that means that the toy has got the value and and uh and they see us as an intruder when we use the toys as an interactive toy that the toy is coming out when i'm doing something with you so it's amazing it was i was laughing at these names their names are so creative and just brilliant probably squeaker because it squeaks a monkey because it's a monkey but it's just reading them it's just absolutely just just made this smile squeaker monkey monster and hot dog so so probably when when the when these dog when these toys got their names there was a training session even if it didn't look like a training session because it was just a fun game and that's how training should look like fun uh, then uh uh the dog just simply learned it because the dog was was having fun and uh and i personally wouldn't leave these do toys around when when uh when when I, i'm not actively playing with the dog so i would i would let things around toys that even they can shred but then i would treat it as if i am giving them a knuckle bone that i'm giving it the dog and the dog can do whatever they want with it if they want to shred it want to keep it want to whatever i am not going near them they can take it to their safe place they can do whatever they want with it it is theirs and I'm not interacting with them. If I want a toy to be interactive, then because I actively want to play with the dog that, that bring it here, bring it to me, let it go, uh, go and fetch it, uh, hide it, use your nose and, and use it for some scent, scent work or just whichever. Um, yeah do not leave high value ah oh, stream your right is brilliant on this one that you can do this <laughs> love it yes do not leave high value on the ground so so the old toys yes they can stay hang around because uh, because they haven't got that that high value but with 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 the new toys definitely they come out we play with it and then go away but the original and my poster as i keep saying op when we are answering da -da -da -da. Oh, let me go back to the messaging uh da -da 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 -da.
Mm. Where is it? Yeah, so the toy toy goes away for a while. Um because company is coming, she is obsessed and will sit by the closet and just stare and whine intermittently. So 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 yes, so that and that's where we go into why actually it is happening because uh we we are coming to the stress bucket but when the stress bucket just overflows with all the emotions are just over the roof and the dog just can't handle uh their emotions that's when the whining the barking um the, all the the stroppy behaviors uh come yeah stress bucket was too quickly in this situation and uh and what behavior the dog is pulling out from from their behavior box that is that is up to the dog so it it can be the barking can be the whining can be even all um transferred over onto us it can be can be can end in a in a bite because that's that's how um when dogs are playing that can just very easily turn turn into a fight because that bite is just uh especially with uh with with bully breeds that is just happening so quickly and then so easily and um, so what we can do in that situation, in that situation, we just need to offer the dog something that, that will please them, but not exactly what they want. So, um, so either a little training session or taking them out for a walk or, or something. So that is, that is what, what we are doing with the, uh, demand barking. What our dogs practice daily is what they become exactly. So, so how we are handling this situation because it it is really annoying when the dog is just focused, so focused on on something uh, that they can't uh, take their eyes off, or they can't take the focus away from from the thing that is happening in front of them. Uh, that. Uh, and they they start whining and barking and and whatever we ha we get to help them out in this in this situation because they are just overwhelmed they can't think they can't can't do anything else so so how we want to do this we want to meet them where they are and it again it depends on the dog and depends on the training history uh with with the bullies um like with my staffy who can be very very similar or could not really anymore but she was de very very demanding and uh and and she could whine and and just look at me and 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 whine 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 a lot that let's do this let's do this then i can just uh get out a toy a, a different toy play a tug game it might happen that the dog is not is not interested in that toy uh because it, it did happen with with Spragan so many times that i offered another toy and and she didn't even want to grab it because no it is it is just not uh I, I can't i can't take that one i want that one and they are just so focused on it uh uh then then we just need to see that can the dog eat uh can we can we give them a, a, a chew probably a chew is too much because they they just can't bite because they are again just focusing they might be able to lick in that situation so we can uh bring out something yummy like a yogurt uh and and just offering them some some licking and some some licky mats then as they are because licking is always uh bringing the arousal down even if just just a little bit and even just for a short while uh then uh then that's enough that we can ask them to do some behaviors and 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 asking a behavior it can be anything like a sit down uh that is just enough to yeah or a squeeze chew yeah 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 squeezy squeezy cheese is is uh something that that i use really often as well that's where uh, I'm sure there is something similar over there. As well. <laughs> uh, 
and um, and uh, so with with the behaviors, I can see that can my dog dog think? Have I got their brain here, or have I still got their brain a week ahead in the future? That when they are focusing on what 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 they want to get instead of what is in front of them right now. So it is just testing the waters and testing your dogs that where can they listen. If they can't, just put the lead on and go out for a walk. Go out for a sniffy walk that takes their mind away completely. Uh, and yes, they can they can absolutely absolutely sniff it. So that's why toys can be brilliant. Uh, subjects to to any type of scent work and also the scent work is again uh using the brain using that is simulating the brain and uh and also with the nose uh the dog's 60 percent the dog's brain 60 percent of the dog's brain is is related to to some sort of uh scent thing uh and and why we are saying that when dogs are sniffing they get tired because uh, uh, the respiratory rate how dogs breathe is uh, about uh, 15 to 30 when they are in normal state when they are active then it it goes up to uh, 50 60 but when they are sniffing and doing scent work, doing search, then that's and we can hear that we can really hear that sniffing working. The respiratory rate goes up to, and probably you wouldn't guess how high it is, it is 120 to 140. So of course they get really tired. That's why they get really, really tired because when we try to to breathe fast and 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 with the power, it is it is physical. It is absolutely physical, plus the brain, uh, the brain work coming with it. So, so, so that's why scent work is is an amazing tool that we can teach our dogs. Uh, whether they are reactive, whether they are just overstimulated, it is helping in so many many situations. So, so yeah, so just put the lead on and take your dog out of the situation and, and, um, there we go. We've got this pregnant on the top of the sofa talking about the devil. Um, <laughs> and she will come in front of my face in a minute, but I don't, don't want to acknowledge her. She will sit in my face. Um, and yeah, so 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 basically there are two things what we are doing in that situation when the dog is annoying and whining and barking and and whatever or when actually the guarding is happening when the guarding is happening so we are not doing anything it is safe leave the dog alone just leave the dog if it is not safe then yes we get to take it away and then next time we have to think about the situation that it, it won't happen again uh because as Silvia already put it up, that whatever the dog practices, that's exactly what they become. So once they they because this, yeah, what what our dogs practice daily is what they become. So if they they uh, dogs are efficient creatures, whatever is working for them, they will repeat it again and again. So if the growling, the biting, the being aggressive that is working in the toy stays. <laughs> Oh, she's pregnant, seriously. <laughs> 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 Attention seeking. Um, so, so basically, uh, I forgot where I was. Right. I'm, I'm going to do some scatter seeding reading for her right now because. <laughs> she's chopping all over the place on me so 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 in the situation uh yeah we don't want to do anything and just want to learn from that situation take it away as as, as a lesson take it away as feedback for you that no that is just too much higher value it's too dangerous I, uh, my dog can't deal with that my dog hasn't got the skills to to deal with this in this situation and we get to teach the skills and that's where we are going 
forward that what actually are the skills and that's why i was asking uh about the other um other if there, there were any other issues with this dog like reactivity and noise sensitivity because because that is um tying in nicely uh with with uh, with the resource guarding dogs normally because that is always coming from a place of pessimism because that's not a happy optimistic dog so you, yeah just i give it up to you because i know i will get it back yeah it just so it is not a, a happy uh happy dog that 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 where actually it is happening and uh and we want to turn that that dog into a happy optimistic dog where they they believe that it there is nothing wrong if they are giving to us it some, actually something fun is happening because uh, uh, I will get to go and find it or, or we are just going to play together it is a symptom exactly and uh, the other uh, thing is that the dog is definitely not calm so calmness uh, the dog is in a is in a higher state but in the negative higher state of, of arousal so we need to teach calmness to this dog how they can self-regulate uh, or if they can't self-regulate which boston terrier and frenchie they are not the most famous of having these traits uh just like my stuffy uh we just need to teach them self-regulation that right mate this is not your time um and uh and self-regulation is happening first again with our our help uh, i don't know if this dog is crate trained or not uh crates can be helping a safe space or just teaching the dog the mat uh that we have been talking about it quite a lot uh probably that's again something that we need to uh do again mat training uh where when the dog can just lie down and chill out um giving a nice chew and uh and just just have have a nice time on their own um definitely my ex bully is a lot more uh better uh he he's he's taken it to an art actually uh being calm unless the little one is not winding him up but he definitely can calm down and and lie down so even even now the little one is just jumping around and and can i swap camera yeah and i can switch it off probably not i don't think so no i don't think so probably should probably but uh no i haven't got okay anyway uh so so it is so we need to see that which what dog what temperaments yes the thing is coming what temperament uh we are we are dealing with so i'm just doing scatter feeding right now uh one by one so she has to go and sort of search for the food but she can move around because uh, i can't ask her from this high arousal to lie down calmly nicely because she won't be able to do that it's just like when when the, the children are coming back from a party and then we want to put them to bed and that's when hell breaks out and they start fighting and screaming and or they just laugh and then they they cry straight away after that and you can't even decide whether the children are laughing or crying now that's what is happening so that that is when when the arousal is high the same with the dog so so we need to um incorporate some movement that that is helping with uh calming down because uh the mind is doing the body is showing us what the mind is doing so if you see the movement of your dog and if it is frantic then their mind is going like that so they they won't be able to chill and when you can see that their movement is become more fluid and 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 the body is just just in in more alignment with uh uh, with itself then 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 you can see that the mind is calming down that's why humans are doing the yoga and uh, pilates and, and all these sorts of sports it's exactly the same how we are calming our mind through our body movements uh, breath work exactly the same thing 
uh, so dogs are working exactly the same way. So they, we don't want them to frantically run around and pace up and down, but uh, we, with our food, we can control their movements and we can help them slow down and calm down and, and bring them down. And once we have brought them down, then they can start, uh, they can stay on their mat with the chew. So it gradually happens, not straight away, that we can't expect them, okay, go to your bed. And that's what we do. Yeah, go to your bed, lie down, settle down. And they, they just can't do it. We have to help them out. And the third thing is disengagement, which is a massive, massive, massive skill. Uh, we get to teach our dogs to disengage uh, from things because when they are focusing on so much, not on us, but on the thing, <laughs> because that would be amazing if they focused on us. Uh, that that means that they just struggle to to even take their eyes off of the thing and and move away from the thing. So so again, we can start it without because that disengagement. Each class, each lesson, everything is there. There is definitely something around disengagement with with any. Any dog teaching and and uh, upping up this skill is just just absolutely crucial. Uh, but but even if you just start um, uh, marking and uh, rewarding your dog for for everything when they when they are moving away from you, when they are uh, walking away from something, it, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be any little thing, and then. Brilliant. Okay, nice. Walking towards something, and I can call them away. Yes, brilliant. Awesome. So we can practice it into 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 small things, and then there are there are obviously there are skills that we we, we need to teach them and and build it in. But uh, I, that's that goes well beyond the remit of a short life. So I'm not even. Uh, but yeah. So so that's why I said it was. Oh my God, such a loaded question. But a great question, but a very loaded question. So definitely management and everybody prioritizing safe, being safe uh, for everybody, for the dog and for us, because we don't want our relationship to break down. Because unfortunately, this can, uh, this is this is just not a nice situation for the human and not a nice situation for the dogs. It's, it's a lose, 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 not lose, lose, lose situation and we want to turn it into a win-win situation so once it happened yeah just mitigate your, your losses and if it's safe keep it with the dog if it is not safe take it away and make sure that the dog is not having it around uh i wouldn't have the toys around toys are i'm not saying it's a privilege but that the the, the the interaction should be coming from me so i i don't want a dog to drop a ball in my lab because i might be working it is my it might not be an appropriate time uh because that way i'm teaching it's not i'm training the dog, dog is training us and it's just happening so many times it is really cute but just think about it in the long term do i really want to want it to happen and yes i'm getting it that it's a foster and it is really cute when they start um initiating those first um contacts that yes i want to do things for you but also teaching them boundaries on the long term will just save um just keep everybody safe so so yeah anything you want to add Sylvia? because i think i just wrapped so many things in there <laughs> yeah i think you uh um made a lot of really good points it is a very very loaded question there's a lot going on to um, squirrel chasing, uh, reactivity to other dogs. So the stress bucket um, possibly is full every day. So the novelty of a new toy um, is just going to spill that stress bucket over right away. And yeah, um, uh, removing rehearsal. So I, if I know I have a dog that's going to act like that with a new toy, I'm not going to bring out a new toy and I'm going to work on a lot of skills beforehand. Um, <clears throat> I don't have bullies, but I have terriers. <laughs> um, so yeah. And they can become obsessive 
when Liam was little, he was obsessive about um, some particular toys, especially the Frisbee type. And um, I had to teach him that he there were choices. It wasn't just about that, but it was about our interaction. Um, I did use food and he goes, I'm not taking that treat. And it's like, okay, then I'm taking the Frisbee. <laughs> uh, then you don't get to play with the Frisbee. So he quickly learned that um, I transferred the value. And I think that's something that a lot of people don't kind of get. Um, they revert to, I'll use the word obedience. Um, stop, no, um, stop behaviors don't really help with anything there's a lot of skills that some of our dogs need. Some of us have easy dogs and that's okay. But some of us, uh, many of us get dogs that are, they're really smart and they need to um, learn a lot of lessons and they need to be at the speed of the dog understanding, not at our pace. Um, and we need to take some of the responsibility away from them if they're just not ready for it. Um, we can't, so research guarding isn't something that you necessarily extinguish. Um, that first of all, extinguishing a behavior is really, really, really hard um, because it pops back up. And anytime we're addicted to something, um, we can have, we can be really good. And then we have that minimal exposure and boom, it's back. So it's extinguishment is really hard. And, um, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert on human addiction or anything, but it is along the same lines. And, um, it's about changing the picture um and building skills and showing something else so it's more about um some people will say a redirection I'm not sure it's really a redirection but it's about looking at and changing the picture because right now the prediction pr picture has become very predictable um i did put up um that you know resource guarding is also a symptom and it can be a symptom of many things. It can be a symptom of a full stress bucket, which is absolutely, I've worked with many cases where as soon as we start changing, um, you know, uh, we, take a, we take a lot of things out of the stress bucket. A lot of the resource guarding goes away. Not so simple with everything. And um, the other thing is, there's likely a lot of other things that are adding to the stress bucket. So letting your dogs chase a squirrel um, once, twice, three times, four times a day is, even though that's fun, it is a good stress and it's still filling the bucket. And it's also amping the dog up and putting their brain in the wrong uh, headspace. So if you don't want your dog having a rave, yes, they are um, predators and they like to chase, but we can give them that experience with a lot of our own um, games. Also, you know, if we've got a dog that's reactive, then that's going to fill the stress bucket as well. So making sure that you're looking at everything, also discomfort, and um, that is a big one. Um, there's a very large study. I'm not sure if I have it in this group. I have another group. Um, but there is a very large study, um, Mills et al. and talks about discomfort and the correlation to um, behavior issues. It's very big. Um, I do struggle with owners actually listening to me and understanding that. So um, sometimes we need to look at the breed that we have too. So um, you do have a breed that has a high incidence of uh, possibly having some joint issues and um, it can be even medical issues where you might see some resource guarding and I know this is an ongoing thing but you might see resource guarding and then a few days later your dog is sick so there could be you know the dog's body is getting stressed their brain understands they can't talk to us and they can't tell us um, 
you know, it doesn't need to be screaming um, in pain for it to be something that's feeling uncomfortable. So that there is that as well. There's a lot of things to look at. It's a pretty loaded question and, you know, stripping everything away yes. and skill building. Um, absolutely want to um, really build a lot of disengagement skills and transfer of value. That was a big one that Anita talked about. And um, the toy shouldn't be so valuable <laughs> that they don't need to be part of it. And, um, you know, and it's not necessarily about possession. It's, um, you know, like I say, there's many things that contribute to the resource guarding um, and, you know, the lack of uh, being able to disengage is another thing as well. So, but it is a pretty loaded question. Hopefully there are some good points that will be helpful for um, Jay Carey. And um, as always, Facebook can't um, solve uh, major training issues, but it is about looking and skill building and uh, um, teaching our dogs many layers of um, training. So essentially you want to look at it as like going to school. So, you know, being able to do certain uh, like thinking and arousal um, for some dogs is really hard. Liam is the same way. He can think and arousal. He can hear me. And I've built that skill over the years in many different situations. So if, uh, if I put one of his favorite toys that actually sends him to the moon is like crack. I can put it in, put him down, ask him to come to me first, um, and then I can release him to the toy. So that's just one little exercise. That's a value toy. So I wouldn't start with a high value toy. Um, I would start with something really, like something really easy that the dog is going to want to, um, want to come to you first. So, you know, that's just one skill. Yeah, probably the squeaky, the monkey, the hot dog are absolutely perfect for this because mm -hmm. probably the dog learned the name by putting the toys away or bringing the, the right toy, picking up the right toy and, and bringing it over to uh, to you. So, so th th these are absolutely perfect that, okay, can, can, can you do something with the toy around those toys, the low value toys? around and can you do something can you can you do a spin can you do a sit can you do a down can you walk away with me can you do a middle can you go around me uh, so there are so many things that we can offer we can play these things with with food and and raise the value yeah get out of my mouth and we don't have to you know for some of our dogs they might not be able to do that yet but pick a yeah. behavior that your dog loves to do i mean a lot of dogs love to hand target um, you can throw something like that in. It mm -hmm. could be something really easy. You can easy. shape behaviors yeah. as well. Um, so as soon as your you see your dog lift their head off of an object, it doesn't have to be, I'll call it hot. So when I say hot, that it has such high value. But if your dog has a toy and they just lifted their head up and away from uh, a different toy, you can mark um, or bridge which that is very helpful in training because now you've given your dog that signal that that's exactly the behavior that I love. And that is um, a start of disengagement. So, yeah. which is, you know, dogs who resource guard um, do struggle with being able to disengage. Um, and that's a skill that some of them need yes. to learn and not, not knowing, not knowing the history. It's really, really hard. Um, you know, and we don't need to, and she didn't ask why, and that's fine. So uh, we have history and, you know, it could have been learned behavior or stress behavior, um, you know, multiple things, something that was learned in previous homes, which is um, resource guarding is on the rise right now. So we place a lot of pressure on our puppies and always want to grab things away from them. So yeah, but we uh, want we want definitely we want to build that trust absolutely mm -hmm. and and that was a perfect example actually that's why i show that it is a perfect example of the lack of disengagement when, when in higher especially in high arousal because when i'm in live she she just mirrors my energy and and uh and and that's that's what actually is happening and um uh 
she started pestering me, then she she couldn't pester me anymore. So she went over to to pester Sam. That okay, all right, I we can play a, a something. Just let let's do something. Just and then <laughs> of course now Sam gone. That okay, you started it. Just let's not stop it here. So so that's very different. Okay, all right. This is and this is just information that these are the things that we we uh, can work on. And now there we go. Here she is. She. She is now calming down and and, and yeah now that down. she got sam all all uh <laughs> excited so yeah and just but for, he, for... he can he can very easily set her down so i have got no problem with him yeah. here i just yeah. throw him some piece of food and he will, he will set her down and yeah. she's tired also tiredness that's and that's another thing has your got any any sleep Bragan is that tired at this time she's in bed She's asleep. She was asleep and I had my shower before the before the live and put my jammies on. She was queuing at the door. Ah, oh, jammies, let's go to bed. She was ready for bed well an hour before. The tiredness plays into into it a lot. Absolutely. Uh, as well. But the pain is definitely because eighty percent of of uh reactivity is pain related yes and um, and, and so... yes resource guarding is definitely because that's we are grumpy as well when, when we have we are in pain oh, and it's too yeah, safe and join me and I'm just you know just tired and pain and no don't even talk to me and we just snap and yeah so the other yeah. is definitely some so i hope it was all useful Yes, and there's you, a Lydia. lot of info here. Thank you for the brilliant question. So please just carry on with the amazing questions. And and uh, and it was nice to answer this way because I'm sure that it helps a lot of other people as well. So it, uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Anita, oh, yeah. for you. joining us at this time. And thank you, everybody. So if you didn't watch it live, which is fine, it'll be on the Facebook group. And hopefully you've gotten some uh, good information to help you. As Anita said, everything that our dog is doing is always information for us. Um, it, it helps us adjust. So happy new year, everyone. Stay safe yeah. and be healthy. I'm going to end the live. And if there's any question post watching this, just pop it into um into this post.